Well, this one at first, yes, image, I can show the touch of the sample. Well, you can see here two levels of gray, and the two levels of gray corresponds to cutting type and cupolite. Cutting type with the yellow points inside, and cutting cupolite with the red points inside. Well, all the microprobe spots, all the, the points have microprobe spots, but you can easily realize that the sample was incredibly analyzed by the Well, this is another slice. And okay, of course, in this case, we have two levels of gray corresponding to cutterpite and cupolite, respectively, with the yellow and red points, all micro spots. Well, this is the most important slice. You can see here that beside yellow and red points, you have two other phases the green phases and the blue phase. Well, the green phase corresponds to a, a combination of aluminum, copper, iron, the proportion 1, 1, 1. So it, it really corresponds to the synthetic battery phase in the system aluminum, copper, iron, started by Tsai and Otos in 1987. But it is not of interest for us in this context. What is interesting in this grain, we are talking of two grains of 90 microns in size, okay? Well, anyway, before to look to these grains, I want to focus your attention on another part in particular, so this kind of slice. So two levels of gray, cutting kite and cupolite. In this case, I reported these more orange spots to indicate micro spots, and in this, on the upper right, this darker phase. But well, this is a silicate, a post-trade collagen, intergrown with a copper aluminum alloys. Well, this is a blow half of the image, so this is a large aluminum crystal. It is incredible because it is interdigit inside the copper alloys. And most important, it shows inclusion. Inclusion of cathodite and cupolite inside. Well, what we have done at the beginning was to extract a micro portion of this large aluminum crystal. Okay, to turn it out, it would be an X-ray in the diffraction study in the electron micro. Well, here are the results. This is the selected grain. We are talking about 40 micro grains. And you can see that it shows no inclusion of the alloys. It is pure. We carried out an X-ray in crystal diffraction study with good high quality data. And the refining chemical formula was in excellent agreement with that obtained from the electron micro analysis. Well, these are the electron micro analysis. What we can say about this data? Well, this olivine is extremely peculiar. I mean that it shows an incredible high amount of phosphorus. We are talking of 1.5% of phosphorus. And then we can see that it shows high amounts of nickel and cobalt. So it is very, very peculiar with respect to electron terrestrial olivines. So try to keep in mind this kind of information. Well, coming back to our session, the most important session, let's say. Well, so now we are interested in the blue grains. What we have done at this point, we have deeply characterized by the chemical point of view these two grains. You can see here 18 microphone spots on these two grains, and you can see that it shows presence of aluminum, copper, iron. But what is most surprising is that, is that when normalized is a common percent in the basic of 100 atoms as to the upper cross crystals, you obtain this kind of formula. So aluminum 63, copper 24, iron 13. Well, it perfectly matched that of the perfect synthetic positive crystal of the aluminum copper iron system. Well, I have to say that when I saw this kind of formula, I was a bit shocked because I realized that it did actually a really promising candidate. What I have to do at this point, I have to, to, to I'm looking forward to, to look at these crystals when I mean so X-ray fashion. Anyway, it reminded me of the thing to do. And please trust me, try to extract the crystal from the from the thin section. It was a very, very delicate operation because the crystals were very rare, only two grains in six different slides. And especially it was very, very difficult to distinguish them at the metallographic microscope because the, the neighboring phase were metallic alloys as well. Anyway, I was able to extract the grains and attach it down to the glass straws with the glue. Well, Anyway, so I brought them in the X-ray lab, and I was a bit discouraged because I realized that these crystals did not impact as single crystals, but they impact as powder. So they uh, were something like powder aggregates. Okay? So I decided to switch the instrument and try to analyze with this kind of instrument. So an oxygen depression is calibrated with the large with a large CCD and with copper radiation, and this is the information I obtained. So you can see that actually we have a diffraction ring, so the material diffracted is powder. And you can see that the diffraction rings are converted to a conventional powder diffraction pattern, of course. Well, what 
most interest, in my opinion, is this kind of diagram. Well, another antenna are plotted in this diagram with the red triangle, okay? So here, we have another antenna. In this diagram are plotted two figures of merit, which are the same in the other individuated by Lou and Bottas in this very article in the 2001, okay? What is very, very interesting is that the natural antenna plots in the same area of synthetic quasi crystals proven to be with forbidden symmetry in the lab and very, very far from the huge amount of data of periodic ordinary materials. So the 60,000 pound, pound particles of the international depression data is. <coughs> so they have to tell you the second data is, the second important data is. So a perfect match from the chemical point of view. And this information comes from the x ray depression. So I was uh, absolutely sure that I found the first natural plasma crystal. So I decided to contact the American guys again. And the reaction I got with this news and the reaction I got was very excited, of course. Anyway, they told me that I need the last important evidence. I need to see the forbidden symmetry in an electron crash pattern to, put, to can say that I found the best natural material. So what I decided, I decided to send the two fragments attached on the glass holding principle. And the crystal flight in November 2008 attached to the glass rod I reported here. And so we are talking about two grains for approximately 17 microns, okay? Well, at this point, none did an incredible work at Nan Yao. So he, he, he took one of these, these glass rods, put it in acetonite, and, and of course, the grain was a powder aggregate, so the grains dispersed, okay? Dispersed in several tiny grains, and he was able to select one of these grains, this one. We are talking about one micron grain, and this grain was important because it showed teeny ages to be able to give electron diffraction pattern, so to be able to be inspected by electron diffraction. Well, so the grain was selected at December 2008. At the beginning of 2009, Paul sent me this email entitled Quasi Happy New Year. So I easily realized that they found the last important evidence. So probably they found what, what I need. So the last important evidence. Well, so some hours later, they sent me this one. So these kind of experimental major, they were really, really massive. So they were able not only to individuate the five-fold axis, but also the three-fold and two-fold symmetry axis of the Icos period. Well, they were able also to measure the angles of the Icos period. You can see here the measured angles, which are in accident period, with the ideal angles of the perfect Icos Well, some days later, they sent to me this kind of high resolution transmission electron microscopy, which was shocking for me because you can see that this is the overwhelming evidence that the atoms are disposable to five point six three now in the material. Well, one of the most striking features, one of the most exciting and fascinating properties of this natural material, in my opinion, of course, is the excellent degree of protection. What I meant with this. You know better than me that quasi crystals producing the lab are characterized by a fuzzy strain. It depends on different techniques for rapid quenching and other techniques, of course. Well, what we can say about fuzzy strains very, very simple. So we can say that an experimental signature is a shift of the bright position from the ideal. I mean, by holding the refraction pattern at the rising angle, we can see that view down the rose peaks. Well, the fuzzy strains of several large uh, the deviation of the dimmer peaks among the strongest ones from the straight roads. So we observe a non sharp levels of fuzzy strains comparable to the best laboratory specimens. Well, so what we can say about this feature in terms of geology, in terms of conclusion of this kind of material? Well, we can say that average mineral samples formed without fuzzy strains in the first place or the mill over geological time scales was sufficient to for strains to relax away. So it was the first important conclusion. So at, at that time we were obtaining all the data to write the science article and we, we got very, very positive reviews and the articles of Hilton appeared from the Journal of the US Senate. Anyway, after the publication of the science article, we had continued to gather more and more information. We were because we were very, very interested in the origin of this kind of material. Well, what we have done. At the beginning, we have carried out a new X-ray powder fashion investigation of one of the powder grain. So you can see here the difference of the new powder pattern with respect to the original one published on science. 
Well, you can see I use the same instrument with visual variation from color to color, and we use an exposition time of six hours for this rotation and 60 hours for this rotation. What we have seen, an incredible curious thing for a geologist. We have, a, we have noted the appearance of these additional things besides those of belonging to the positive structure, of course, but these additional things hardly corresponds to diopsidic plant parts to another part of our core mineral. So this important silicate is actually intergrown in the same 70 micron grain attached to the glass rod. So it was incredible. Anyway, this, if you heard, uh, ah, by means, sorry, of these additional things, I was able to calculate the unicell parameters of this kind of plant parts. And the unicell I found is an absolute with that four dioxide part in the biological textbooks. But if you were so lucky to find out the silicate intergrown with quasi crystals by means of an overexposed X ray in flash investigation, probably we could be lucky as well to find something like this in the remaining grains, in the remaining quasi crystal grain, in the time of the reading principle. So we carried out a new transmission electron microscopy. And we were lucky, actually, because we found the interface between climate power sensor, which is the silicate, and quasi crystals of the black grain. Well, we were able also to cut it out the chemical profiles, and you can see the variation in the chemical, in the chemical elements inside the plant person's structure. So it was amazing. Well, so another interesting work we have done last year was this an X ray microtomographic study of one of the powdered quasi crystal grain attached to the glass rod. You can see here the image of the transmitter. Well, this is one of the tomographic sessions, and it contains a lot of information. <laughs> Because you can see three different regions, this is only one of okay, the graphic section. So you can see here these high, highest absorbance regions in white, which are quasi crystal grains. Then we have these intermediate absorbance, these greenish yellow grains, among the quasi crystal grain, which is the silicate. And then we have, of course, the lowest absorbance, which is the glue, okay, because I remind you that the grain is attached on the glue on the glass rod. Well, this is a tomographic movie of taking into account 500 tomographic sections. So it, it, it does not give important information anyway. So we have already sent this kind of information. So you can see a large quasi crystal grain, this whitish material inside the grain. And we have some green regions among the quasi crystal grain, which are the silicates. What is important is this kind of image. So three dimensional reconstruction okay, of uh, X ray tomographic data. This is the volume of the reconstructed crystal, and these are the reconstruction. What is important, we can see high density and low density regions, and it is important to estimate the different percentages of quasi crystals and silicate were existing in the same grain. Okay? So it appears obvious that, oops, that the quasi crystal grain is, is the major component way, okay, with respect to silicate the quasi crystal grain. Well, another exciting discovery than last year was this in the recovery of the first single crystal of natural quasi crystal. Sorry for the words, but I mean that we were able to find another grain, this one, and it is a huge grain. We, we are talking about 100 microns, okay, with respect to the others, but it is single. You can see here that it is uniform, also from a chemical point of view. This is a superposition of the X ray maps of copper, aluminum, iron, but you can see that the, this is chemically uniform. Okay? It shows only a thin band of cupolite, I remind you CuAL, with minor concentration of iron in this case. Well, so, but the crystal is single. Well, in which way I know that it's single? Well, at the beginning, we have carried out an electron backscatter diffraction study, and you can see that the five fold symmetry is presented by different grains, so all the grains are oriented in the same way. Anyway, we carried out recently also X ray single crystal diffraction study on this new single crystal of quasi crystal, natural quasi crystal, and of course we carried out also the single rotation. Anyway, in this case, we have single spherical spots and not diffraction rings as in the powdered grain. So it was very, very important. Well, this kind of grain, you can imagine that it was the 